As we switch over to 2024, the government's finally giving us uh, EPA fuel economy numbers for 2022. You know, they're not the fastest at doing things, a good old government, but we're gonna break down which manufacturers have the best fuel economy as of 2022, and where the government expects manufacturers to be with average fleet fuel economy by certain deadlines. Guys, grab your snacks and drinks. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Buckle up. All right, here's some quick hitters before we break down the graph. We had a record setting fuel economy in 2022, no surprise. It rose to 26 miles per gallon on average, up just 0.6 miles per gallon from 2021, which is roughly a 2% increase. But that 0.6 miles per gallon was more than double the annual rate of improvement in fuel economy over the past nine years. Uh, in 2026, vehicles are actually supposed to achieve 49 miles per gallon. That 49 miles per gallon was finalized or began to be finalized in 2022, but that could all change if a different administration gets in and the next year or so. I don't think we're going to see 49 miles per gallon in 2026, just based off of the rate of fuel economy improvements. The current administration wants 58 miles per gallon by 2032. That's not signed into law or anything, but that's what they're shooting for. And CO2 dropped 3% to a record low in 2022. Now let's get into the graph. Let's talk about which manufacturers are the most fuel efficient, but this is already outdated, but this is the most up-to-date information we have, if that makes sense. Um, because here we are, Hyundai has the best fuel economy as a fleet in North America. They also have uh, the lowest emissions out of the tailpipe as well, CO2 emissions. Hyundai, why are they so high? Well, in 2022, at least, I believe they were selling the Ionic 5 at the time. They also had the Kona EV. They also have hybrids in their lineup. They also don't have any V8s. Well, Genesis has V8s, but they're such a low volume Actually, only wait, one model had a V8 um, and they discontinued that probably before 2022, the G90 V8. So Hyundai um, with no body on frame trucks either, as well as Honda and Kia, that's why they're also very high. Um, with no body on frame trucks, no really large displacement engines for the most part. That's why you see Honda, Hyundai, Kia up there at the top. Subaru also has no v uh, engine outside of a four cylinder that I'm aware of. They used to have a a, uh, a flat six or a boxer six, right? But that was discontinued eons ago, it feels like. So Subaru is in the top four for fuel economy despite having no hybrids. Now, why did fuel economy go down? That's interesting, right? Well, they in introduced the Ascent. And here's the thing. The, these numbers, these arrows, the blue and the red, are the changes from 2017 to 2022. So a five-year jump uh, and time, where has their fuel economy gone? And for most of these manufacturers, it's pretty much static. There's a few that is really bumping it up. Toyota had an enormous jump. The biggest jump we see on this, and I bet as we look into 2023 and 2024, it's going to keep getting bigger for Toyota with the introduction of the BZ4X, Yes, EVs are factored into these lineups somehow, some way. I guess I already talked about the IOE 5, right? Um, with the introduction, I guess that'll help Subaru out as well uh, with the Solterra. That'll improve them quite a bit. But with the introduction of the fully hybrid Camry in 2024, uh, the introduction of the fully hybrid RAV4 in 2025, as well as electric RAV4 potentially, like Toyota's fuel economy is just going to keep going up. We also have hybrids now of their pickup trucks and that is going to help them out massively um, the new land cruiser is hybrid only so toyota very impressive and it's only going to get better as time goes on and in this time period in 2022 they they came out the corolla hybrid which probably helped them out we have the corolla cross hybrid. they essentially have hybrids of everything in their lineup except their sports cars i'm trying to think if there are any exceptions to what i just said and i can't think of any off the top of my head. And that's not including Lexus. But anyways, Nissan getting slightly better. Again, Nissan still has no hybrids in North America. They have the Leaf. They Well, the Leaf is getting replaced by a new Leaf in the next couple of years. Um, and they will introduce their e-power hybrid technology, which will help them out. But that won't be until a new Murano comes around like in 2025. 
So yeah, Nissan, very interestingly, not selling hybrids in North America. Mazda went down two miles per gallon. Um, not entirely sure why that happened. It could have been they were just selling more of their large CX-9 vehicles like that, offering more turbocharged powertrains across their lineup. That could be a thing as well. Not quite sure, but now that Mazda has the, the CX-90 plug-in hybrid in their lineup, they'll be getting a CX-50 hybrid in their lineup. This is going to start increasing pretty quick for them. Uh, as I expect most of the manufacturers above them to do as well. Volkswagen went down in fuel economy as well, but with introductions of the ID Buzz coming soon um, and selling a lot of ID4s, which was the ID4 on sale in 2022, I want to say it was, but I feel like this number is going to keep going up. Their fuel economy on their cars are pretty good, at least the ones I've tested. Both no hybrids in a line that's probably hurting them. Uh, BMW, it's going down, but now BMW has a ton of EVs. The i lineup, the i4, i5, i7, you guys know the iX, all those are really going to bump BMW's fuel economy really, really, really high. Uh, potentially leapfrogging most of these manufacturers in 2023 and 2024. Same thing for Mercedes. Um, they're really low on this list. They sell a ton of V8s, twin turbo V8s as well. Uh, Ford with their pickup trucks, GM with their pickup trucks, and Stellantis not only with their pickup trucks, but their supercharged V8s, their big V8s that they have. No surprise that Stellantis is down here at the bottom uh, with their muscle cars. So Ford, Chevy, Dodge, essentially the worst brands when it comes to fuel economy. Also essentially the worst brands when it comes to emissions. Um, and the best ones when it comes to fuel economy emissions are typically all the Asian automakers. Isn't that funny that that's kind of the specialty of this channel. That's what I started out with and that's what the foundation of this channel is built on viewers who really like Asian autos. and. All the Asian autos are doing the best in terms of fuel economy uh, and low-ish CO2 emissions. And there's no way for me to strip out the EV aspect out of all of this, which in 2022, it wasn't that complex. Now, as we get into 2023, 2024 and beyond with multiple entries of EVs throughout the lineups for each of these manufacturers, it's really going to change these numbers massively. I wanted to dust on fueleconomy.gov because there's some interesting um, graphs that you guys see or in compilations of data. So today's most viewed vehicles, uh, the Prius is in there, the 23 and the 2024. Um, and then you can break it down by sedans, hatchbacks. Uh, you can keep going. Look, 06 Corolla is the most viewed hatchback. Is there What, what was an 06 Corolla? That almost was like the matrix, right? Very strange. Um, but yeah, you can go through all of these if you want. I'll put in the link down below. Here are the uh, best and worst fuel economy vehicles. I like stripping out the EV portion here because if there's an EV in the segment, it's automatically the most fuel efficient uh, or best fuel economy, I guess you could say. So if you're looking for things that actually run off gasoline, this is going to tell you which ones are the most. Uh, what? What? How is the Prius considered midsize and the Corolla considered compact? They're on the same platform. Anyways, that doesn't make much sense to me, but you know how the government is and their segmentations for whatever reason. But there you go. There's the most efficient uh, cars on the road. Here are the most efficient trucks. How does, how does an EV6 fall into a truck? Is it, oh, it's because it's light trucks. That's why light trucks. I forget that the government classifies crossovers and stuff like that as light trucks. But let's take out the EVs. Um, the Maverick, I love this pickup truck. If you watched my review on it recently, very, very impressive. Um, 37 miles per gallon combined. If you're driving around town, you can get over 40 miles per gallon. It is fantastic. Uh, we also have the uh, Silver, I called it the Silver Chevy Silverrod Jeez Louise. Uh, that actually is impressive, 26 miles per gallon. Um, oh, it's because it's diesel and the government wants to get rid of diesel. It's a sad, sad time if you're a diesel fan. Long live diesel. A Nero EV, Kia Nero at 53 miles per gallon, falling into a light truck or sport utility. Toyota Highlander hybrid, but this is the image of the Grand Highlander. So that's throwing me off. We also have the Sienna coming at 36 
miles per gallon. Here are the worst vehicles uh, for their class in terms of uh, fuel economy and the Ferrari Prosangue is in there at 12 miles per gallon. And if you want to look up the vehicles with the best electric efficiency, I like this setup. I wish it was miles per kilowatt hour because that number makes a lot more sense in my head than the, the government's convoluted ways of uh, doing miles per gallon E. Ionic 6 long range rear wheel drive with the smaller wheels is insanely efficient. Lucid Air is really efficient despite having a really big battery pack. Interestingly, I don't see Tesla models in here and I don't know why. I figured they would be actually higher in efficiency than a lot of these competitors, but for some reason, they are not in here. But I'll put all the links down below for you guys to check out what are your thoughts about Fuel economy is something fun and interesting for me to talk about. You guys know I like hybrids, uh, all vehicles. I'll, I could drive a V8, a V-twin. I could drive a hybrid four-cylinder and get 50 miles per gallon. That makes me happy too. Or I could be, you know, dripping off zero to 60s in an electric car while also getting really uh, efficient usage of energy, if that makes sense. Anyways, I got to shut it down there. Thank you guys for watching. See in the comments. It's going to be fun to see what you guys have to say about fuel economy and electric cars and all that good stuff. And the extremely high expectations of the government and their mandates to like almost double fuel economy in just a few years from now. All right, guys, have a great day and peace.